What is going on, good people of YouTube? It is me, Chavez. I'm back with another NBA player prop video for you. Today's November 2nd, 2023. As always, I hope this video finds you doing well and in good spirits. We'll recap our plays from yesterday, touch on some injury news in the NBA, go over some new plays for today's four game slate. And I also want to spend a moment or two over on DraftKings, just recapping my night from yesterday. Crazy, crazy last game of the night between the Clips and the Lake Show. Uh, I just want to share the overall results from uh, from my lineups yesterday. So if all that sounds good, stick around, drop a like, sub up and click the notification icon so that you're notified of all upcoming content and videos from me in this channel. And without further delay, let's get into our plays from yesterday. All right, right quick before we get into our plays from yesterday, I do want to touch on some injury news. Not a whole lot going on, but things to look out for. Devin Booker questionable to play tonight, which is a uh, upgrade from doubtful. We got a. Uh, Nick Batum sitting out as well as Bradley Beal sitting out. Keep your eyes on uh, Zion Williamson news as well. Going to be playing in the back to back tonight. Does he play? And if he does play, how many minutes does he play? So if you have your eyes on any Zion props, make sure you are up to speed on all the news coming out of New Orleans. All right, let's get into our plays from yesterday because we had a fantastic night. Three and oh, I hope you were able to tell these plays. Whoo, man, that was good. This is a good feeling. Good feeling to win them all. I love it. I love it. Love it. Love it. Let's start in Toronto. We talked. We took the over. Scotty Barnes, fantasy points. Scotty Barnes making me want to dance a little bit. 21 points, 12 boards, 5 assists, 3 stocks, ending the game with 50 plus fantasy points. So, yeah, he went over. Next play we talked about was Shaden Sharp over PRA. Shaden Sharp making me want to dance too. Overall stat line, 29 points, seven boards, five assists. He goes over PRA in points alone. And then lastly, we talked about Josh Giddy rebounds, set the six and a half. We took the over on this one. He ends the game with nine boards. Overall stat line, 15 points, nine boards, and four assists. Scotty, Scotty, Josh, and uh and Shaden all make me want to dance a little bit. We go three and oh with our plays. Again, I hope you were able to tell these plays. Leave me a comment below if you were able to tell. And if so, what did your overall results look like in your slips? All right, let's move on to uh, a new day with new plays. I have a few of them that I want to share with you on this very small slate. So without further delay, let us transition into the next few slides and start breaking these down. All right, first play I want to talk about is going to be a points prop, and it is for Victor Wimbenyama. 16 and a half on prize picks. I like the over on this one. All right, now as we pull it up over on props.cash, we can see that books have this set to 17 and a half, so we are getting a slight discount on prize picks at 16 and a half. Now, yes, this doesn't look the best. Two for two for four so far this season, two up, two down, but there's a reason why he didn't go over in those other games. Let's take a look at it. So let's scroll all the way down here to uh, the fouls section. And we can see first game of the year versus Dallas, super nervous, picked up five fouls. Pretty much we uh, kind of could expect could expect a, a result like that. So when you pick up five fouls, you're sitting on a bench a lot. Your production is very limited. The game against the Clippers, chalk that up to just a much better team who just beat them down and... Um, the Spurs are going to come across a lot of games like that. As we scroll up to his field goals attempted and field goals made, I do want to bring this to your attention. In those two games where he did not go over, he also did not go over 10 field goal attempts. In the games where he did go over his point prop, he averages 16, almost 16 field goal attempts in those games. So when we get Victor Wimbenyama shooting 12 or more times in a game, that's gonna that's gonna really help his overall his overall ceiling in terms of points. We need Victor Wimbenyama today to keep his damn hands, his long ass hands to himself, unless he's swiping or blocking. Don't pick up stupid fouls. Uh, don't turn the ball over because when you turn the ball over, you lose possessions. And if you're turning the ball over five times a game, that's five lost possessions. How many of those possessions could you have scored on? And how how much does that hurt your overall stat line? So. Limit the turnovers, limit the fouls, and I think we just continue to see him uh, play more comfortable, more comfortably out there on the court, play with more poise. And I think as that as that happens, we're going to see him 
We're going to see him score 20 points a game at some point. So right now it's only set to 16 and a half on prize picks. I think that's good. Let's take the over for Victor Wimbanyama. And that's play number one for today. Play number two, talking about Kelly Oubre Jr. Over 10 and a half, first half PRA. So a few things to like for Kelly Oubre Jr. tonight versus the uh, Toronto Raptors. So number one, he's already played this team uh, back on the 28th, which is just a few days ago, and came out with a nice little stat line of 12 PRA. Uh, number two, this line is actually set to 10 and a half on prize pick, so we're getting a nice little discount over here. And then number three, Kelly Oubre should see more minutes tonight with no P.J. Tucker in the lineup. Remember, P.J. Tucker, Harden, get shipped out to L.A., so that does open up additional minutes for guys like Kelly Oubre Jr. He's already a productive player. He's already a productive member of this team. And if, you get, if you're going to give him an extra two, three minutes in the first half, I can't see him not hitting this stat line. So 10.5 PRA for me. Feels a little low for a guy who's going to have a, uh, a slightly larger role, uh, a guy that can knock down shots and give you a little bit of everything in terms of rebounds and assists and points. So go ahead and give me the over 10 and a half first half PRA for Kelly Oubre. And that is going to be our second play for today. All right. Third play on the board was sticking in uh, the city of brotherly love. Let's show some love to D'Anthony Melton. 16 and a half PRA. I like the over on this one. I'm really hammering this Philly game because of the opportunity that is uh, presented to guys like Oubre and Melton. So again, no Harden, uh, no, no PJ Tucker. This opens up additional minutes for guys like Melton, for guys like Oubre. Melton already getting 30 plus minutes a game. We should see this increase maybe a couple by a couple of minutes. I don't really feel like he needs the uh, the extra minutes to get this done. 16 and a half feels a little too low, but just without PJ Tucker in there, you're talking about a few extra rebounds, a few extra shots for DeAnthony Melton. Um, should remain active, you know, in tonight's game. He already has great history versus Toronto. Three out of five games over the last year. He has gone over this stat line. He has crushed this line. Start the year off. He's gone over it one time. He's hooked it once and gone under three. So we're getting okay odds here for the over. Kind of a coin flip if you ask me. But just looking at the role that he's going to have tonight, factoring in what the uh, reliable projections are, are giving DeAnthony Melton to finish in that 18-19 range, just makes me like the over on this one. I do think this is a little too low. So again, hammering the Philly side of this game. Give me the over 16 and a half PRA for DeAnthony Melton. That's play number three. Play number four, let's talk about Cade Cunningham. Five and a half assists. I like the over on this one. And as we pull up Cade Cunningham assists over on props.cash, we're going to see um, not the best lines here. But again, once again, we're getting a slightly lower line over on prize picks. Set to five and a half. Books have this at six and a half. So let's go ahead and bring this down for Cade Cunningham. Three games where he's gone over this, two games where he has not gone over this. Cade Cunningham is capable of dishing out the rock 10 times in a game. Like, that should not be a problem for him. Props.cash even has this projected over six. My reliable projections have this going over six as well. Facing a, uh, facing a New Orleans team who is coming off a back-to-back -back versus the OKC Thunder. Both of these teams coming off a back-to-back. -back. So... When we look at the overall usage rate, you know, for Cade Cunningham, he has the ball in his hands a lot. Uh, he's either shooting or passing, to be honest with you. So I just like the position he's going to be in. I like the fact that he is playing well over 35 minutes to start the season off. I mean, that one game against Charlotte really brings his average down. But for the most part, you're looking at over 35 minutes. We always talk about how minutes are gold in the NBA. If you're not on the floor, you can't produce. Well, Cade Cunningham is on the floor, and he's on the floor a hell of a lot. So five and a half assists, getting a discount line for a high usage player. I love it. Five and a half, give me the over, over for Cade Cunningham. And that is going to be our fourth and final play for today. All right, like I mentioned, I do want to spend a moment or two over on DraftKings. And I want to talk about this double up lineup that I entered in yesterday's contest. So I entered 18 uh, one lineup. I entered it 18 times in this double up and then I had it uh, entered into a free contest series. But um, I just want to show you this lineup that I had yesterday because um, 
Got some really shitty performances from Ben Simmons. Got a really shitty performance from Marcus Smart, who, uh, along with the rest of the Grizz, got spanked by the Jazz. They sang that ass to sleep last night. But the rest of this lineup was really strong with Lonnie Walker pretty much benefiting from the shitty game that Ben Simmons had. But um, Lonnie Walker exceeds. Jabari Smith Jr. exceeds. Bagley played 33 minutes. I mean, you can see he was almost 100% owned in this contest. McCollum, 55 points, 68 points. So, uh, going into this last game uh, between the Lakers and the Clippers, I, my, my, my score at this time was sitting at about 185. I was almost uh, dead last in the contest. I think there were 1,189 entrants in this contest. I was sitting at like 1047. Between LeBron James and D'Angelo Russell, they score over 100 points, 100 fantasy points. And my final score, uh, my final score is 304-25. Uh, at the same time, I think Marcus Smart had uh, given me an extra like 10 points. I mean, he did what he could, but he sat out the entire like fourth quarter. But I was really out of it in this contest. And uh, LeBron James and D'Angelo Russell really came through. My logic behind this lineup was obviously I thought I was going to get more out of Ben Simmons and Marcus Smart. And uh, I just like having that late night hammer in my lineup because uh, it's the worst feeling being up in a contest and then having that last game uh, knock you knock you out of uh, of the of the money. So that's uh, that was my lineup for yesterday, and I was pretty happy with the overall result. Just some crazy shit that happened yesterday. Like one percent own LeBron James. He he really helped me out yesterday. So I went from feeling like, oh, I'm not going to cash. This kind of sucks to, hey, I want some money yesterday. So 18 lineups, $10 each. I won 10 per. So that's $180 uh, winnings in just this double up. So I just wanted to share this lineup, which is I thought was a pretty good lineup overall. I did not expect these poor performances from Simmons and Smart. I also didn't expect LeBron James to go for damn near 70 points, but that's how it is in DFS. Um, I'll try to share my lineup today in the Discord if you have any interest in my double up lineup, what I'll be running today. But yeah, that's going to do it for the uh, DK portion of this video. And ladies and gentlemen, that is going to do it for the video. All right, all right, all right. Here's what we covered in today's video. Recap and plays, went over brief injury news. I gave you four player props for today's slate and then we uh, just recap the results of my DK entries. Crazy, crazy night in LA yesterday. I tell you what, if you haven't done so already, if you like this video, you like what you hear, sub up, truly appreciate it. Drop a comment, let me know what you like on the board as well as your thoughts on these plays and uh, why not share this video and channel with somebody you know if you think it might benefit them in any way and as always last but not least whoever you follow whoever you put in your slits whatever player props you you go with today i hope they all respect the damn coin best of luck to you all and until my next nba player prop video chavez is out